Taite Kubo and Masakazu Morita interview, aka Taite Kubo is the author of Bleach, and Masakazu is the Japanese VA for Ichigo from Bleach. Now, I saw this come out yesterday, I've actually not read this yet, and I kind of wanted to go into it blind, and, you know, read it alongside of you guys and look at this interview, because from what I've been told, like, the only thing I know about this interview is apparently Taite Kubo talks about how he wants the anime to be even better than the manga, and he wants to improve upon some of the things that he couldn't within the manga for the anime. And so as soon as I heard that, I was like, okay, I gotta read this interview because honestly, I mean, I think everybody can agree that, you know, regardless of how some people may feel about Bleach, it was wonderful seeing Bleach back once again, seeing the, the fandom and the community just jumping up for joy, you know, in fall season of last year, and knowing that it's going to be coming back next season, like Core 2, it's honestly exciting. So let's just, uh, let's dive into this, let's see what Taite Kubo and the VA of Ichigo has to say about the series and what they're being asked, let's just, let's get right into it. What was your response when it was decided that Bleach Thousand Year Blood War was going to be animated 10 years after the last series had ended. Masakasu. Upon hearing that it's been 10 years, I thought, 10 years have already passed since the last series. It doesn't feel like that much time has passed. Honestly, I, I, I guess into a certain circumstance, he probably picks up a lot of VA work and stuff, so it probably did pass very quickly, and it was just shocking when 10 years literally has passed since, you know, Bleach returned. Taite Kubo. I feel the same way as Morita-san. Morita-san says, since the anime ended, I've continued to have the opportunity to record new lines for the mobile game Bleach Brave Souls. I think that's why I haven't felt the 10 years pass by. That makes a lot of sense, since the mobile game was, like, one of the only Bleach games. And, you know, this really talks about a big point. I really wish Bleach had a dedicated game series. Like, Naruto has one, One Piece gets one, Dragon Ball gets one. It's really sad that Bleach is kind of thrown into the wolves and doesn't actually have a really good, like, like RPG game or a fighting game or whatever, you know, not just a mobile gotcha game. I want a legitimate, like, game to release on console or PC. It's sad we never got that. I, I really hope, thanks to the anime's return, we get that eventually. Um, Kubo Sensei. I'm sure having the chance to continue voicing the same character like for a game helps maintain the connection a voice actor has to their feelings and image of their role. I guess that makes a lot of sense. Morita responds with, that's right, doing a voice for a game ensures your passion doesn't decline, and with regards to Brave Souls, it also maintain, maintained my connection to our fans. I stayed connected to fans not only in Japan, but also in Asia, Europe, and America. I think K-Lab has put a lot of effort into this, and I am thankful to them. That being said, lines recorded for games are usually self-contained dialogue, but for anime recordings, there are actually conversations between characters. In that sense, it's been a while since I had the chance to engage in a conversation with the other Bleach cast members. Kuma Sensei responds with, that's true. What you hear in mobile games are not actual conversations. I, I guess it makes sense. Like when you're recording, you know, VA work and stuff for mobile games, you're not necessarily having a 1v1 conversation with a character. You know, you're just recording your line, your little like, let's say, catchphrase or whatever, and that's about it. So that does make a lot of sense. Morita, that's right, I was a little scared to exchange words in a conversation, but once I heard my castmate's voice, I was able to respond to my own character's voice. That sort of phenomenon happened. Kubo responds with, that's amazing. The ears remember and that triggers the voice. Morita responds with, that's exactly it. It's like my ears remembered. Interviewer, please tell us if there's anything that has changed or hasn't changed from 10 years ago. Kubo responds with, For Thousand Year Blood War, I've been joining the recording sessions through remote calls. I'm assuming because of COVID. Uh, for the returning characters, I'd be asked to listen to a couple of their lines and give my thoughts. But most of the time, it's just me going off saying, Yes, that's the voice I remember. As Marta's son mentioned, the VAs remember their voices a lot better than me. I guess that makes sense since they have to actually get into character and play that character. Uh, Morita responds with, but even the veteran VAs were a little worried about getting things right. Even Shin Ichiro, Mika-san, asked me if he got the voice of Urahara right. Kubo Sensei responds with, my family commented that Ichigo's voice had changed after watching episodes 1 and 2 of Thousand Year Blood War at the advanced screening event back in September 2022. I thought that was interesting, because to me, the change in Morita's voice perfectly captured Ichigo's growth as a character, as it sounded fine to me. In fact, I didn't even notice that Morita changed his voice, so when I questioned if it really was different, they said, it's completely different. How could you not notice it? Lol. But if you ask me, Ichigo and Thousand Year Blood War is supposed to sound sound this way. This is an interesting little comment, actually. So, once again, this is my first time reading the interview. Um, the way I kind of picture this is, because you think about the events of Thousand Year Blood War, 
there was a time skip, like a huge time skip, a lot of time has passed, and she goes grown as a person, and all that type of stuff, so his voice maturing, like the VA's voice maturing, and Ichigo sounding a little bit more adultish, or, you know, older in a way, I think is perfect, I, I do agree with Kubo in this way, even though he might sound different, I think it's good, because it shows that, you know, Ichigo has grown since then, a lot of time has passed, so I think that is a perfect representation, and I think that Kubo really nailed that properly, um, more to tell, I'm so happy to hear that, to go more into detail, Tell, I'm taking a different approach to the way I deliver my lines. For example, Getsuga again can show like the sound of the ga in Getsuga or adding variety to the sounds I couldn't make before, especially at the end of the consonants where I'm adding a few embellishments. Also, I slightly increased the volume of my mid baritone. I tried to slightly increase my range and make it uh, reverberate. Uh, I, I, I just butchered that. I'm not, I'm not even going to try. A little more. I've lengthened the time it takes to pronounce ge, su, and ga. And tried to make them linger a little to give them more weight. But it's really a noticeable change to those who weren't looking for it. Originally, when I first read the Bleach series in Weekly Shonen Jump, Ichigo spoke with a voice different from my own in my head. Kubo-sensei, do you mean you had a specific VAs in mind for the voices of Ichigo and Rukia? Morito responds with, no, I didn't have any specific VA voices in mind, it was more like an idea of how each character would sound, and that goes for Ichigo too, I have an idea of his voice, I'm always trying to get closer to that, and 10 years since the previous series, I feel I can finally get close to it. I'm using slight inflections I never used before for Ichigo's voice in A Thousand Year Blood War, so I'm glad to hear Kubo-sensei says he thought it matched his idea of a more mature Ichigo. I'll sleep soundly tonight. Oh, that's very sweet. Okay, so interviewer uh, asked a question. As the general supervisor and as a lead VA, can you tell us a memorial event that happened during the production of Bleach Thousand Year Blood War? Kubo responds with, the, the thing that was most memorial was that the Takayuki Sugo, who plays uh, Bach, had a hard time memorizing lines written in katakana. After being told how to say them several times, he said, alright, I'll write it out in hiragana. He said it in a really cool voice, so that made it sound even funny. <laughs> Uh, that's pretty funny, Bach, like, th this, like, really deep voice character that is, like, this ancient man having, like, having trouble, you know, doing his lines, that's actually kind of hilarious, I I'm not gonna lie. Okay, so Morita responds with, Sugo-san never changes, does he? That happened during the previous series as well, while in the booth, he asked me, Ichigo, Ichigo, how do you read this line? And I said, it says, Bankai. Then he said, alright, got it, it's Bankai. But once we started recording, he said something else. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's pretty funny. Do you end up changing the plot from what you originally had a month ago? Kubo sensei, when I start, I don't have an actual plot yet. I just want to start the story with certain words, and once I decided on the opening lines, I don't do anything with it for a month. Morita, does that mean you need time to let it mature? Kubo, that's right. It's easier to draw after letting some time pass. It's not a routine, but that's the way I draw. So, basically, Kubo's saying he doesn't really like doing weekly series anymore, which explains a lot. Maybe he would be best for a monthly series release at this point, or, you know, bi-weekly, judging by his overall workflow of what he does. That's at least what I'm getting from this. Interviewer, please tell us something you're excited about or wa uh, want us to pay attention to in Part 2. Morita-san says, I just learned the other day how far Part 2 is going to cover, which left me in a bit shocked and lightheaded. I'm trying not to let my knowledge of what's going to happen in the story affect my performance on Thousand Year Blood War. I think that how I react whenever something is placed in front of me is important. I feel that I need to take an honest look at it without letting myself be uh, swayed by my own arbitrary opinions. Kuba sensei director Taguchi, and the entire staff are putting a lot of thought into this production, and as VAs, I believe our job is to understand the intent behind their work so we can give our best performance. And I'd like to continue to do that. I would like to follow through with that regardless of it being part 2, part 3, or part 4. Once again, you know, Bleach is going to be 4 parts. Kubo sensei In part 2, there is a new battle that isn't in the original- Ooh. I knew about that isn't in the original manga. I wasn't able to draw a battle between two certain characters. So when the anime production team said, we want this character to fight around this time, I decided to revisit that idea by providing them with some drawings and names of the characters. It has been so long since I've read The Thousand Year Blow, I don't even know what he's talking about. That is fascinating. I really wonder what that is going to be on. That That's legit interesting. Like, anyone have any guesses for that? Like, what Kubo would actually add in? Like, he says he even gives names of characters, so it's even unnamed characters. So, 
I'm legit curious now. I, I that is fascinating. So we're gonna have like a literal anime original manga scene. Like that that's cool. That's really cool. Like that's really really cool. Morita responds, but did you draw it in a manga style? Kubo Sensei, I didn't split it into panels, but I drew about five or six pages of illustrations to show how they would move, how they would transition, and how they would fight. I think they probably do a good job on it. Morita Sun responds with, are you serious? I'm looking forward to that. Fans have been asking, I'll split. It'll split into four parts. But will Thousand Year Blood War end after the uh, will end after the fourth part? But you're saying there's also going to be a new battle being inserted in between. Kubo Sensei. In part one, there were several additional scenes, but no new battles. Morita Sun says, "I'm really looking forward to this." That is a very fascinating way to end this. Indirectly, that teases the fact that Bleach won't end after four parts. That's what that teases. There's always potential continuation. I mean, the one shot. I'm not going to dive too deep into the one shot because obviously that would be spoilers. But is this being implied that maybe instead of let's say drawing manga, you know, like Bleach as a manga, he might carry the series on in anime format, like the the one shot into an anime format? Is is that what's being implied here? If so, that would legit, I think, be for the best. With just how Kubo's overall work ethic has changed over the years, that, I would be down for that. Like, that would be really cool if that is the direction he wants to go. But okay, I guess I'm going to leave the video at that for now. This was a very interesting interview. If you want to read the full interview yourself, you know, um, I'll have it linked in the description. Check it out, because I know I cut through probably some things with this interview. But um, just, you know, look at it yourself. It's very fascinating. You learn a lot about these two individuals and kind of the work ethic, what drives them as individuals. I legit think this is a fantastic interview. So I'm going to leave it at that. If you enjoyed the video, let me know in the comments below. If you'd like more content like this, also let me know in the comments below. But with that, be safe, stay healthy, she be out.